This brand has been out for quite some time now, but I personally haven't seen many reviews on them. This first speaker I've got is the Cinema M6 from XTZ. It's a fairly compact speaker measuring 9.1 inches wide by 17.3 inches high by 8.7 inches deep and it weighs 19.8 pounds. If we take a look at it from the top, we can see that it's a wedge shaped design instead of just a regular box. This helps with standing waves inside the enclosure and also adds a slight angle to the speaker. So if you're mounting it against the wall, it'll aim the speaker towards the listening position. This reminds me of my old MAK S150s from back in the day. This is also made from HDF instead of MDF, so it's a super dense feeling speaker. I think the only speakers I've had made from HDF were the Arendels and the Perlissons, and now these. If you know who designed these speakers, then you get a prize. I'm just kidding, you get nothing. But if you know, leave a comment down below. Aside from the asymmetrical design, the most unique thing about it would have to be the 4 tweeter array. Now not every tweeter plays up to 30 kHz, only one tweeter does while the other three tweeters roll off at 3K. This arrangement helps with floor to ceiling reflections and since there's four, which allows them to go down to 1.2 kHz. These are all 1 inch silk dome tweeters flanked by two 5 and a quarter inch mid woofers. It's got a frequency response of 58 Hz up to 30 kHz. Around back, you can mount these to your wall using either the keyhole slots, or these are pre-threaded if you want to flush mount these using XTZ's mounting kit, or if you'd rather, they also have optional floor stands. They're also bi-wireable and bi-ampable. I've got three of these in, which I'm going to use for the front three channels, left, right, and center. For surrounds, I've got four pairs of the Cinema S5s. This has got the same 1-inch tweeters that go down to 1.2K, but instead of four, there's two, and it's got a single four and a half inch midwoofer up front. On the sides of the speaker, this has got two three inch full range drivers that you can configure to operate as either a dipole speaker, which allows the sound to fire from only these side drivers. This will give them a very diffuse sound, or you can play sound out of only the front drivers and not the side drivers, which will give this a more directional sound like a conventional speaker. Or you can have all the drivers playing at the same time, which is like a tripole speaker, so you get the directness of a monopole speaker and the extra spaciousness of a dipole all at the same time. And this is all configurable on the back of the speaker with these jumpers. You can also mount these to the wall the same way as you would the M6s, or use the optional floor stand. It is a little smaller than the M6s, measuring 11.1 inches in height by 8 inches wide by 8.9 inches deep, and it weighs 16.5 pounds with a frequency response of 80 Hz to 30K. And lastly, I've got four of their Cinema S2 Atmosphere speakers, which are going to be used for the height channels. These are really small, measuring 5.9 inches high by 9.1 inches wide by 8.7 inches deep, and it weighs 5.5 pounds. It's got a frequency response of 95 Hz to 25K. It is the only speaker in the group that uses a five and a quarter inch coaxial driver with a 16 millimeter tweeter in the center of the mid woofer. So this keeps the size really small, but it should have really good directivity. You can mount these on a wall the same way as you would the other speakers, or you can place this on top of the M6 to use as a ceiling reflective speaker. Of course, the best way to mount them would have to be either on your ceiling or high up on your walls. Now since these are relatively small speakers with limited bass response, I will be using a pair of XTZ's 1x12 edge subwoofers. It's got the same high quality build as the speakers, and just like those speakers, it's got a matte black finish which will keep reflections down to a minimum. It's a stout little subwoofer measuring 17 inches high by 20 inches wide by 18 inches deep and it weighs 53.9 pounds. It's a ported subwoofer, but you can use it sealed using the included foam plug. It's got a single 12 inch driver up front with a frequency response down to 19 hertz going ported or 24 hertz sealed. I did a separate review for these subwoofers in another video, so I'll leave a link for that down below in this video's description if you missed it. I've got the three M6s mounted behind my screen as LCRs. The S5s are going to be to the sides and behind my seats. The S2s are mounted to the ceiling while the subwoofers are placed in the front and rear opposite corners of the room. They'll all be hooked up to a Trinov Altitude processor and powered by a pair of Trinov 8M amplifiers. For demos, I'm going to be using a Zipedi Media Player and a Cladscape. For demos, I'm going to run these full range without the help of any subwoofers and then again with the subwoofers active. The first demo we're going to check out is Ready Player One. 
you've probably seen the movie, so you're going to hear cars zipping from side to side and coins dropping from overhead. The system is clearly meant to be used with a subwoofer and not full range. With the subwoofers active, these have a very full, very forceful sound and they can play extremely loud. At the same loudness level without the subwoofers, they can sound ear-piercingly bright. If you have room correction in your AVR or processor, then you should be able to tone it down. As far as the sound signature on their own, it can be really hard to tell what they sound like when you've got 5, 7, 11 channels or more going at the same time. So I did hook up the M6s to my two channel setup so I can see what kind of sound profile they've got. I've got them powered by an NED M23 amplifier and a Michi preamp. Like I mentioned before, they do sound pretty thin without a subwoofer and do come across more on the brighter side since there's no bass. So while listening to music, I kept it at a moderate level. Otherwise, they were just too much for my ears. Now, they don't quite have the same airiness as the AMTs in the Elax that I compared them to, so soundstage didn't reach as far behind the speakers as what I heard with the Elax. It still had some decent sparkle up top with cymbals and hi-hats, but it was slightly more forward and didn't seem to float in the air as they did in the AMTs. I found vocals also imaged more front and center, which gave off a more intimate vibe over the Elax, and the horizontal extension was a little closed in. And one thing about how they image the center vocals, it doesn't really have a laser sharp fan or center channel image. In contrast, the vocals sounded like they were pencil thin on the Elax, while the XTZ's center image was, I want to say, maybe as wide as a basketball. I know these are not hi-fi audiophile type of speakers, so I wasn't expecting that type of refinement. But for home theater, having that bigger sweet spot means better seat coverage for more than just one person. So I'd say that these are definitely more home theater centric rather than for two channel. And then bass response was barely there for any of the pop or rap music that I played through them. I mean, there was some bass, but it was overpowered by the mids and the highs. So you'll definitely need a subwoofer to offset the upper end forwardness. Back to Ready Player One, these all share the same high-end detail across the board. I opted to use the surround speakers in direct mode because I didn't like the way they sounded with the side drivers active. The effects are much more localizable with just the fronts going. The front to back panning was smooth and seamless with the subwoofers active with really good high channel detail coming from the overheads. So when those coins are dropping, it sounds really sharp and very distinct. If you were to run these full range because you simply can't have a subwoofer, then this is when you're going to notice the difference in timbre between all the speakers. As you'd expect, the M6s have a deeper sound over the surrounds and they are a bit brighter. The S5s don't go as deep as the M6s but are noticeably beefier sounding than the S2s. The S2s are a true satellite speaker with no real usable bass. It's pretty much all highs. But like I said, the top end was very detailed and made it very easy to pinpoint which effects were coming from their respective spots in space. But for me personally, it is a tough setup to listen to without a subwoofer unless you're listening at really low volumes. The next demo we're going to check out is Quiet Place. It's got a very atmospheric mix that's quiet yet still very active, which will engage all of your speakers. Because the top end has such good detail, they had no problems capturing the slight background effects. If you listen closely, you can hear the wind moving from outside of the store while at the same time making it feel like you're inside the store. That's when the high channels engage to create this cohesive vertical extension with the lower channels. 
the footsteps tracked perfectly across the front stage, and with the subwoofers active, you get this low harmonic bass note that provides for a little pressure throughout the room when we're looking at the scene from the daughter's perspective. This brings the sound stage inwards to give you that inner ear effect, which kind of sounds like it's in your head, which if you didn't have the subwoofers active would be completely lost without the same type of immersive envelopment. So a subwoofer is a must to tie everything together to bring harmony across all the speakers. I will give you so much more. You'll die first. I have died before. The dark side of the Force is a pathway to many abilities some consider to be unnatural. As far as dialogue intelligibility, the M6 as a center channel does an excellent job of projecting voices with a weighty mid bass presence all the way up to the top. And as I mentioned earlier, it doesn't have that sharp clarity of an AMT, so these play really smooth at loud volumes without breaking up or distorting, which makes dialogue easy on your ears in a full-blown surround sound setup at, again, loud volumes. Now included is a measurement supplied by Gene over at Audioholics. He's also got a written review of the same setup with a different sub on his website as well, so be sure to stop by to check that review out. This shows the bass response of the M6. You can see that it starts to drop off at around 100 Hz, so as indicated, you will definitely need a subwoofer. And if you want to see how the subwoofers perform, I'll leave a link for that review down below in this video's description. At the time of this video, the XTZ Cinema M6 is selling for $1,490 a pair. The Cinema S5 is $985 a pair. The S2 Atmosphere speakers are $349 a pair, and the 1x12 Edge subwoofer is selling for $9.99 each. The subwoofer is one of the best sounding subs for $1,000 out there right now. And the thing is, it's been available for many years, and nobody's really talked about it. So if you want a tightly controlled subwoofer that can pull off double duty for movies and music, and I think looks really good doing it, you should really consider checking out the 1x12 Edge. It's been my go-to subwoofer for the past few months. Now the system as a whole for the price I think is a knockout and I'm not sure why more folks don't talk about the brand, at least in the home theater space. You can crank these speakers extremely loud if you like that kind of thing and they will remain smooth across all channels at these extreme loud levels. I think this particular configuration works great in small to medium sized rooms and should give you a very cohesive sound across all the speakers. If you are a discerning person and want perfect timbre in every location or have a larger size room, I'd personally go for M6s all around for all the channels, because there are differences in bass. If a car or a helicopter moves from front to back or over top, you can tell which channel sounds thinner than the others. And for the non-believers, the surround channels really do produce bass, so don't skimp out on your surrounds, the lower channels, or the high channels. Now they do make bigger versions of these speakers, the M8 and the M8 Towers. If they share the same finesse and detail on the upper end, except with deeper bass extension, those should be even better for larger spaces and possibly perform better for music. All that being said, if I was putting together a home theater and didn't have a huge budget or even a big space, these are truly impressive speakers for the money and they're built way better than most of the stuff you find in say a Best Buy. I mean, these are made from HDF, so when you pick them up, it feels much more expensive than what they are. I'm impressed and I'm gonna be sad to see them go. So what are your thoughts? Have you guys ever heard of XTZ? Leave a comment down below and let me know. Well, thanks for watching. Subscribe if you haven't already and I'll see you in the next video.